due to have baby number 10 very soon. Let's see, probably a week and a half till my due date, I think is where we're at right now. And I haven't done any freezer meals yet. Of course, they're not a necessity. I have very capable teens and kids that enjoy cooking, but I like having meals in the freezer that are ready to go, especially that can be thrown into a crock pot because I don't want all of the burden to fall to them. So although they're able to put together meals or make lunches, I want it to be something enjoyable that they do for the family, not something that they're having to come up with meals for a family of 11. Most of the family is gone today. They went on a long adventure <laughs> um, helping Jason do a whole bunch of things, but Elsie stayed behind to help me. And so we are going to try to put these meals together while we have a quiet day. So I'm gonna show you everything that we're planning to make, and then we'll see how much we get done today. Elsie wanted to get started by making some little energy bites, you yeah. know, just the oatmeal peanut butter kind of thing. So she's been working on that. I have a bunch of, if I can get them out here, I have a bunch of gallon Ziploc bags. That's what I'm going to use to put most of these meals together. Um, I think everything that I'm going to do today are just the kind of dump in the crock pot and go kind of meals. So these will work well. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to label them now ahead of time before things start getting messy. Mm -hmm. That way um, I can keep track of what I'm doing and I won't have to stop and clean things to be able to write. Okay, so on the list, and again, we'll see by the end of this video what I actually get done. We'll see if I run out of steam. Whew, but my plan is um, to do chili, four meals of chili, lemon garlic chicken, barbecue chicken. Um, those should be super easy because that's just using the chicken legs and you just dump the marinade over it. Then I'm going to do a bolognese, which will be served over pasta. And um, I'd like to put together a hamburger soup and some lentils. Lentils are something that I tend to crave after I've had a baby for whatever reason. I know they're high in, high in iron and other things. So I'm just going to have them pre-made in little individual portions so that um, I can just heat them up. Heat them up for myself if I want something extra. So the way that I'm doing these bags is I'm putting the name of what it is and then I'm putting the instructions. So thaw it in the fridge and then cook low for five to six hours. All of these are going to be slow cookers. So they'll know to put it in there if I'm not the one doing it and then any other directions. So this says serve over pasta. Okay, I wrote out all of the freezer bags and I also had made a list of how many chopped onions and how much minced garlic I needed for all of these recipes. That way I could just do those things all at once, have them in bowls so I can just grab from them easily. I'm going to use my food processor to make this process easier. Food processor process. you can buy already minced garlic from the store. They sell them in big jars at Costco. Chopped, minced would take all of this work away, but we are not really a fan of that garlic. I don't know, just we're so used to fresh garlic and the flavor of that, that when we had bought and made freezer meals in the past from those pre-minced garlics, we did not like it. So to me, it's worth the hassle to do it this way. Beautiful. It smells so good too. I just did low for what? Probably a minute. Less Beautiful. than that. All right, onions are next. We'll see. Use the mixer to put together the. Um, what are these things called? Energy bites. Energy bites. And now she is putting mm -hmm. them on trays, and we're going to freeze them just enough to put them into Ziploc bags without them all sticking together. Okay. So for the chicken, I can fit five pounds of chicken in these Ziploc bags. So if we are needing to, you know, if we're needing a bigger meal, we would cook two of these bags for our family. But if we can make a lot of sides, then we could get away with one. But I think this is only about a dozen 
big drumsticks. These are pretty huge drumsticks. We were actually, these are not our chickens. <laughs> actually, somebody gave us a bunch of chicken uh, drumsticks, which was nice, but um, yeah, they're, they're big. So they're one, about one per person, a little more than one per person for our family. Of course, that includes like the toddlers that aren't going to quite eat as much. Okay, so anyway, five pounds is how much I can fit in these bags. And for the lemon garlic chicken, a bag gets two tablespoons of lemon juice and two tablespoons of my minced garlic. So I'm just gonna put that in there, zip it up, and then massage it around. Ugh. You gonna eat it, Mom? One. Eat it by fork fork. Two. not really a measurer. So even though I'm saying these amounts to you, I'm not actually using any type of tool that would tell me how much I'm putting in. I'm just, I kind of eyeball everything. I even do this when I bake. Yes, I'll see. Mm -hmm. One squash is for a tablespoon. One what? Squash. The next thing I'm doing is a barbecue chicken. I'm starting with the really easy ones first. So again, all you do for this one is put five pounds of chicken in here and a whole bottle of barbecue sauce. That's it. Smoosh it around, freeze it, and you are good to go. This would be another one that you could serve with rice, a side vegetable, or maybe some baked potatoes, something like that. Okay, next up is sweet and sour chicken. So I will go ahead and link this. Um, it's five healthy crock pot recipe dump dinners. That's the little website here. It's been an hour that those things have been in there. Okay. Should you I go, go get them? Yep, you can go get those out. Okay. Um, and the only, there's other good recipes here, but I'm just making the sweet and sour chicken. I did adjust it though. It's a lot of sauce for, she had one pound of chicken breast and you know, I just didn't need that much sauce. So again, my bags contain five pounds and I only doubled this sauce recipe and divided it up into my two Ziploc bags. Doubled-ish, I should say, because you all know I don't measure. So double-ish. Um, also, she I didn't have any rice vinegar, so I didn't put that in. I did not put in pineapple chunks because I didn't have pineapple and some of my kids don't really like, I, I've made pineapple and chicken before and they didn't love it. Oh yeah, good idea. Um, and so I did ketchup, I did the brown sugar, The instead of olive oil, I had avocado oil. And I'm doing the garlic. I had raw peppers that we had sliced and put in the freezer and so I thawed those out to add in the peppers. They're just red peppers and uh, ketchup. And then instead of soy sauce, which is gluten, I am using these liquid aminos. This is what I use instead of soy sauce. Throw those ingredients together again. Same idea, just throw it in the bags, mush it all up and it's good to go. I think this one will really be a hit. Um, Especially with those peppers baked in there. Mmm, I just think this is going to be so good. Another slow cooker meal. Um, they're all saying around six hours on low, so that should be easy. 
um, once they're thawed out, of course. So thaw in the fridge first, then slow cooker for around six hours on low. While I was working on the chicken, I actually started cooking this. So it is half beef and half venison. That's what I had in the freezer. And I have this Dutch oven full, and then I have enough to do one more Dutch oven. I really like cooking ground meat in this Dutch oven because it cooks so evenly. This is my Marquette Castings um, Dutch oven. I've talked to you guys about this before. It is, aside from being beautiful, it's very affordable compared to other um, similar products. I can put the link for you because I'm sure I still have that somewhere. So the big difference of these recipes that I'm about to do is that they are actually going to be cooked. And so instead of going in raw like the chicken, I'm going to cool this down. Of course, the rest of the ingredients I'm adding with it are all cold, so that'll help it cool down quickly. So these bags will be more of just a heat and serve. So of course, it's still good to thaw it out in the refrigerator ahead of time, although you wouldn't have to. Um, and then they're going to be a heat and serve. So the way that I am doing this with making a larger quantity for the things like the hamburger soup is I'm packing in the ingredients like the onion, you know, the other vegetables, the, the beef. I'm packing it tight in the gallon Ziploc bag without any liquid. That way we'll be able to have a larger soup when the time comes to make it. I have um, bone broth that I canned myself in my storage. And so I put on the bag that what we are going to do with this is dump the ingredients into a pot and then add in those cans of bone broth. That will be the liquid for the soup and that will be able to bulk it up because otherwise I just don't think one gallon Ziploc bag of soup is enough for our family. So that's kind of my cheat way of doing this. This is how the energy bites turned out. She just par froze them, I guess is what you would say. Now they just pop off this tray really easily and we're gonna throw them in a Ziploc bag so we'll have them in the freezer whenever we want them. This is the recipe we made up because this is what we had on hand. So one jar of peanut butter and that is a really big Costco size jar. Eight cups of oats, two cups of raisins, two cups of honey, and a half cup of chia seeds. We may have put in a little bit more than that. Yeah, because I Elsie's like me and she was kind of dumping. Um, and then we just mixed it in the with the mixer. We actually used the bread hook attachment, <laughs> and which mixed hole. really well. Yeah. And they're delicious. So there you go. And like I said, you just kind of adjust the recipes with whatever you have on hand. So if you had some more things to add to it, then like that would nuts. be good in there too. Nuts, shredded coconut, I don't know, different types of dried fruit, chocolate chips, whatever you had on hand. I'm taking a little dishwashing break here because I do not want to get to the end of this tired and with dishes everywhere. So it is amazing to me how much easier it is to get everything done with all of the kids gone, especially those really energetic little ones. I know that it made everything a lot harder for Jason because he's having to travel. By the time they're done, they're gonna have three hours on the road and he's stopping here and there. They're picking up car parts, having tires put on, getting a brush hog getting me some lights for my greenhouse, all of these different things, multiple stops. It's gonna be more challenging, but he's like, that's okay, no problem. And wow, is it easier to get a lot of things done. This was a great gift for me. The next recipe we're putting together is this, it's supposed to be a turkey bolognese, but I have my beef venison mixture. I don't have any ground turkey. So that's what I'm going to use. So the meat is cooking and so this recipe, it's kind of like a rich meat sauce and it will be fully cooked. So all it has to do is be heated up, cook some noodles and pour it over the noodles. So what I'm going to do, I have all of my onions and everything chopped and ready to go, but I'm going to saute them so that they're not going in raw. We're gonna saute them and then we're gonna dump all of the tomato products together with the onions, mix it all up, dump in the meat, mix it all up and then dish it out into four freezer bags. So. That's kind of how I'm doing this one. It has um, diced tomatoes, tomato paste, tomato sauce. There's a little bit of honey in there. I've got some oregano. Oh, the garlic also needs to be sauteed with the onion. 
but because it's all chopped up it should be really quick and simple to put this together Elsie's opening cans right now all of the tomato cans this one is also supposed to have red wine vinegar I think I have balsamic vinegar I'm just so bad at keeping all of the different things on hand let me see what I have here yeah I have a balsamic vinegar I'll look in my pantry and see if I have anything else here Okay, so I sauteed the onions and garlic just for a little bit and then I put in the tomato paste since it tends to clump and we added two cups of water, the oregano, some of that balsamic vinaigrette and let's throw the honey in here, or balsamic vinegar I guess it is. Let's throw the honey in here too, I'll see if you want to get out the honey container. Okay. It calls for, um, well you can see the recipe when I link it. because. The nice thing about these recipes is you can say how many servings you want. So I was able to increase it up to a really large amount. So for me, it said eight tablespoons of honey, but it will be different for you. Eight globs. Eight globs, right. We never measure it out. No. And then, so this is just the rich base, and then this will go with all the tomato sauce and the diced tomatoes and the meat. Okay, so this is how I measure tablespoons. One, two, three, four. So we're going to use our big 30 quart mixing bowl to mix this together, not because we need it that big, but just because it's easier, nothing spills over the side. So we're going to put this no up way. here on the table. Should we go put all of these in? Yeah. Let me turn this. So that we see you. All right, dump all these things in. Let me get you a little spatula. Mm -hmm. So we have all of our cans of sauce, you may stir it, diced tomatoes, the, the real rich mixture we made on the stove, and our ground meat. We're just going to mix this all together, and then we'll taste it to adjust for seasonings. And then we can put it in the Ziploc bags. I'm glad I stayed there you home. Have it. You're glad you stayed home. Yeah, I don't like car drives anyway. Well, there you go. You've been a well, good helper. How full are you going to fill the bags? Well, I'm trying to imagine how much sauce we use. They're not going to need to be all the way full. Because, again, this goes with pasta, so. Um, yeah. Stuff good is so good. It really is good. Very tasty. Mm -mm. Okay, the way I'm doing this without dying, I'm, that I'm just joking, but um, the way I'm doing this without feeling miserable is that I am sitting down a lot. That's why you're seeing me at the dining room table instead of over there in the kitchen. Because if I stand too long, then I'm really hurt. But if I can really sit and just stand once in a while and move around once in a while, then that is pretty perfect for me. Should I open this so, can of diced tomatoes? Yeah. Okay. So we're working on putting together chili right now. Mm -hmm. We're using the same big bowl, which I set right next to me on the bench so that I could sit down and be really comfortable. There's also this one. And we're mixing together diced tomatoes, tomato sauce. We're going to throw in some of the onions and garlic. I have to saute um, Kidney beans, baked beans, the meat. Oh, yeah, um, those. We don't have to saute them. That'll yeah. be okay. I've got some cumin. What else is on there? I don't, I don't know where the rest of it went. Wait, 
Wait, there's this one there now. somewhere. It needs need some scraping. I broke my my rubber spatula scraper Just thing. Just now, I have like a smaller uh, one that fits really nicely in the cans. I broke that one, hmm. and I actually broke another one earlier this week, or maybe that what? was last week. Yeah, yeah that blue one. But we're still using it. It's just the end broke yeah. off. So I'm kind of in a pickle. I still have my one nice one, but it's too big. Because the sourdough dough was too stiff. Really, yeah, snapped it's really big. the top okay. off. Could you hand me that recipe, Elsie? That's okay. um. So long as you sit down. That recipe over on the couch. All right, we're going to throw in some of these, and unfortunately, they don't have a pop top. This chili recipe calls for kidney beans and pinto beans. Um, I am using, my family likes chili a little sweet, so the way that I get around that is I use these for, in, um, in place of the pit, whoa, I just made a mess. Now I need a paper towel. You have to um, get out to get a paper towel. So these Wishes Baked Beans are actually just pinto beans, I believe. No, they're navy beans. Okay, totally wrong. So I'm using these instead of the pinto beans. Uh, and they will like that. They always. This is how I always make it. It's kind of a treat because it's a product that we don't normally eat around here. So it will be a nice treat. Okay, we're going to mix mm. this all up. There's not enough beans. This is the size of the bowl right there. Yeah, I'm still adding the beans and then we'll add the meat, the onion, and the cumin. We'll mix it all up and then we'll just put it into the Ziploc bags just like we did with whatever we made last that I can't even remember. <laughs> okay, it is four o'clock. I'm running out of steam. So we're going to make this really easy. The way that I'm going to do hamburger soup is not with a recipe because I'm just going to dump some things in these bags. I'm going to dump in mixed vegetables so I have no chopping, some onions, some of the minced garlic, the hamburger that's cooked up, and then some of our um, cans of the diced tomatoes and a tomato sauce. I'm going to dump these into Ziploc bags. I have a note on the bag that says heat with the jars of broth um, and that's it. We'll just let this stuff cook slowly in the crock pot so we can kind of simmer and get that good soup flavor. And then they can top it with chips or sour cream or grated cheese or whatever. But yeah, we're going to get this mess going <laughs> and get these meals finished imperfectly because this mama's running out of steam. I am ready to be done. We are wrapping up. We're gonna lay everything out and show you what we did. Help me, help me, help me. But the extra onions that we didn't use that are chopped up, I'm freezing in it's individual itty, 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 portions. Guys. I really like having chopped onions in the freezer because it, it's one of those things that can make a meal so much faster when you are sauteing onions and you can just dump them in and not have to chop them. Okay. So this will be good. And same for the garlic. We'll freeze that in little ponies too. Put, start putting stuff away. That will be nice to have on hand. Mm. 
Okay, it was about five hours worth of work from start to finish, and this is what we have. Two bags of Energy Bites, two big bags of lemon garlic chicken, two barbecue chicken, three hamburger soup, four of the Bolognese, two sweet and sour chicken, and two chili. Plus we have our extra onions and garlic that we put in individual yeah. bags in the refrigerator. So, whew, I feel good about that. We're gonna move this to the freezer and <laughs> you may have an energy bite. We're gonna move this to the freezer and we are done. We also, in addition to this chili, I have one more big serving of chili that I just put right away in the refrigerator so that I'd have a meal ready to go, perhaps for tonight, because we will need to feed people. Thank you for joining us today. I hope this inspired you to do some freezer meals, even if it means just taking what you're making for dinner, doubling it and putting it away in the freezer. It can help so much during those days when you just don't feel like cooking. So we'll keep you posted as we continue the watch for baby who could come any day now. <laughs>